Well, come on, church. Let's declare this great day and let's rejoice in it right here. Say, come on. Say, this is the day. Thank you for joining us on tonight. I, I pray that you've had a great week thus far. I want to encourage you to continue to walk with us as we go through our midweek expression as well as our Sunday morning worship experience at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And I also want to encourage you to continue to stay connected through our Sunday school uh, our initiatives. And also uh, want to remind all of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church members on March the 27th from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. or beyond, depending on how God moves, we will be on the corner of Stratton Ridge and 288B. We're going to be celebrating Easter with, I pray, individuals that have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I want you to know, family, we may not be in the building, but the church has never closed. So I need your help. Come on out. Celebrate with us. Celebrate with your community. Celebrate with those that, have, that do not know Jesus in the pardon of their sins. That's the Great Commission. Come out and celebrate with as we give Easter baskets to our children, as we give some special items and goodies to, to the adults. Uh, we want to have a wonderful time. Don't forget, though, mask up. Please, this is just a drive through And we, we'd love to see you. We'd love to have you come out and hang out with us. Amen? Amen. Well, family, 
There is a word from the Lord on tonight. And if you'll turn with me to the gospel according to Luke, we're in the 18th chapter and we're going to be reading verses 22 and 23. That's the gospel according to Luke. That's the, th the third book in the New Testament. Chapter 18, verses 22 and 23. My Bible says, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. But when he heard these things, he became very sad. For he was extremely rich. Follow me. Come. But when he heard these things, he became very sad. For he was extremely rich. And family, just for a few moments, I want to utilize as a topic of our discussion on tonight. I want to ask a question. What were you expecting? What were you expecting? Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you again for another blessed opportunity to come before you, Lord. We, we thank you for your expression of your love and your favor that's over our lives. Father, we realize that we didn't deserve it, but because of your grace and your mercy, we are still yet in the land of the living. Now, Lord, I pray as only I can over all those that may be listening to my voice. I pray blessings over, over their lives, blessings over their homes, Father. Move right now as it relates to their children and their grandchildren. Move right now in, in the midst of relational storms, Lord. I pray for marriages. I lift them up to you. And Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus for our nation, for our city, for our counties, for our state. I lift them all to you, Father, as we continue to navigate these waters of uncertainty. I pray, Father, that you would bring about healing, not just a physical healing, but Lord, I pray for a spiritual healing. I pray for a spiritual awakening, Father. I pray now, as only you can, touch, Lord, the hearts of your people, that they may be receptive to your word on tonight. And Father, I pray. Pray now that you would anoint my voice, anoint my mind, anoint, Father, my thoughts, Father, anoint your word, that, Father, that it would, it would help, that it would soothe, Father, that it would chastise, Father, that it would correct. And, Lord, I pray now for those that may not know you in the pardon of their sins, Lord, I pray that something will be said or done on tonight that will encourage their that will walk with you, that will give them the resolve to say, what must I do to be saved? And Father, I'll be ever so mindful and careful to give your name glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. It's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Family, before I, before I move any further, I just want to again thank our guest psalmist Jason Smith for blessing our hearts on tonight. Uh, I pray that you were blessed uh, uh, by his ministry on tonight. Amen. Amen. The question, what were you expecting? Well, family, I believe that every believer in Christ has at some point in time had the same experience as this individual in our text on tonight. Yes, family, we recognize that that, that the way that Jesus is leading us is not the direction that we would have intended to go. And I don't believe that I'm just speaking on behalf of myself. I believe that if, if you are who are listening to me tonight were, to, were to, 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 to admit, to confess 
that there have been some, some avenues, some, di some streets, some direction that God has placed before you that you were not intending, you definitely were not expecting for him to give you. But you find yourself somewhat shocked by some of the things that God wants you to do. Let me help somebody because some of you, may, you, you you're looking at me saying, okay, Pastor, what are you talking about? Well, family, there have been times that, that I know that God has asked you to give when, 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 when it ri originally wasn't on your heart to give. I know that it has been, it has been times in your walk that God has, ha, 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 has given you the opportunity to serve and you wouldn't serve because it's not what you were expecting to do. You were expecting to come and be served. You were expecting to come and relish in what was going on. You weren't expecting to have to give of your talent or to give give of your treasure or, or, or to give of your creativity. You weren't expecting to do that, but you found yourself in position that if you were going to follow the lead of God, you were going to have to do the unexpected. It just wasn't what you were expecting to do. Am I right about it? So now family, I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight, but I know that when Jesus saved me, I'm going way back. I may have been struggling with, with, with current circumstances when he, when he entered in, into my life and I may have been struggling with situations that were going on and, 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 and I called on the Lord because I didn't have anyone else to call on. But if I were to be honest, I really wanted God to fix my issue. I didn't really want him to change my life. I know I'm speaking to somebody because I'm not by myself. I was enjoying my life. Yes, I was. I, I loved back in the day going to the clubs and getting my dance on. Yes, I did. I, I loved back in the day hanging out with my friends, smoking and, and getting high and things like that. I, I loved what I was doing. I loved doing what I wanted to do and I loved doing it when I wanted to do it. And I know I'm not by myself. Some of you right now are smiling. You're laughing because you remember back in the day when God called your name. Yeah, there were some things that you just wasn't really, really ready to give up. Am I right about it? It's, yeah, and like me, I pray for him. Or either I wonder if you're willing to testify that when Jesus saved you, there were some things that you really enjoyed doing. And if you were to be honest about it, you, you really didn't want to stop. And if you were to really be honest about it, you found yourself just like me in the church, but still living a worldly life. Come on now, I know it's somebody out here I'm talking to. Can I be 100 with you tonight? You see, when Jesus saved me, I was, I was really looking for a way out of the mess that I was in. But I really wasn't ready to give up my lifestyle. I just wanted what Jesus had to offer at the moment. Some of you know what I'm talking about. But if I want to really be transparent, and I pray that I can, and I pray you won't hold it against me, and if you do, I'm praying for you, and I want you to pray for me. But I still... Even after I, I, I said I do, even after I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart, although I was in the church singing in the choir, uh, being a junior deacon in my church, I still didn't take Jesus nor salvation seriously at the beginning. And some of you can shout right now because some of you still don't take it seriously. How do I know? Well, you, you look here. The Bible says emphatically that you can tell uh, uh, you can tell a tree by the fruit and by in which it bears. Some of you get that a little bit later on, but 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 maybe you can identify with me as I as I you know I played church. I knew what to say, and I knew when to say it. But one week. Mm. I was in church doing a revival. 
preacher was preaching and oh, he could go. The organist would get with him and boy, they could go together. And like I had always done, I felt like I was going to play church once again. But on one particular night, something got a hold of me. And after it got a hold of me, I started realizing that my thought process began to change. My, my, my desires began to change. Uh, and the taste for the life that I had been living, uh, that I had been previously living, uh, the, the life, the, the desires, they suddenly began to disappear. Can you identify with what I'm talking about right now? Well, like I, like I was feeling back then and like I believe that some of you either have felt or are feeling right now, I believe that this is what this particular young man in our text tonight is going through. He, he was at a crossroad and, and he knew something had to change. But he really wasn't ready for the change that would be required of him by Jesus. And let me share something with you. He wasn't the only one. You weren't the only one. I have, am not the only one. There are millions upon millions of individuals that have been touched by the finger of, of love. Been, they've, been, they've had the spirit of God that has moved on their heart. But yet there's still something on the inside that is still holding them back from giving themselves over. They still desire to live the life that they were living before God came into their lives. And in our text, guess what? The Bible talks about several characters. Uh, not, not only, not only this, 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 this rich young man, but, he, but, but in Matthew 16, Peter heard the words, get behind me, Satan. And when, when, the, when, when he told Jesus not to go to Jerusalem and be crucified, Peter family was enjoying the travels that, with, with, that, he was, that, that he had with the Lord. He was enjoying the perks that of walking with Jesus, not just for Jesus, but he was enjoying having Jesus with him. He loved the security of knowing that Jesus was right there with him. And no matter what happened, he would not be alone in this fight that we call life. So to consider what Jesus was saying and to take Jesus seriously was to admit that soon he would be without the physical presence of Jesus. And he wasn't ready for that. That's not what he expected when he signed up to walk with Jesus. He, when he signed up, to walk with Jesus. He expected Jesus to be with him always when he signed up to walk with Jesus. He expected Jesus to feed him when he signed up with Jesus. He expected Jesus to heal the sick, to raise up the dead, not him. It's not what he expected for Jesus to come and say, I have to go. For him to accept that now, see, he would have to really begin to walk, the walk that he had been talking. He, he had to walk the walk uh, and put in the work that before Jesus had done, he'd have to come to the realization that no longer can I depend on or can I expect for Jesus to do what Jesus is expecting me to do. Come on, come on now, come on. Who really wants to do that? Who wants to have to take on responsibility? Who wants to have to do the hard work, especially when life's been good? Well, family, in our text, as I said before, we have a wealthy, powerful young man turn away from Jesus. He turned when he was simply invited to give up the one thing that no matter who asked, no matter who came into his life, 
he was just not willing to abandon. He wasn't willing to abandon his money, his, his comfort, his security, his identity. He just couldn't do it. And can I share a small piece of advice with you before I go any further? At the heart of our expectations, I said our, our expectations are often the desire for more. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because if it's money that controls you, your, then your desire is to have more money. If, it, if it's people that are around you that build you up, then it's more people that you will desire. If it's drugs and alcohol that, that holds you up, then it's going to be more drugs and alcohol that you, that, that you will need to hold you up. If it's adulation that, 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 that motivates you to do what's right, then it's going to be more motivation that will help you to continue to do what's right. In other words, the desire, this desire is, is often more what we like and more of what we're comfortable with, not what's right. And it's definitely, almost rarely, a desire for change. Let me share with you, if you don't mind, a personal, personal story for myself regarding change. Back in 2011, I was honored to be considered as the pastor of, a, of, of this great church, New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. I love New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. I love the people of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church. However, coming from a large church, Whereas I was the pastoral care pastor, my responsibilities really included assuring that members were given counsel when needed, that they were given an ear to, to listen to their issues and to make sure that all of the hospital visits, all of the nursing home visits, all of the, the, the bereavement visits, that they were done and that they were done with excellence. I also had responsibility of, of assuring that all of the, the, the components of our building were, were maintained in a proper fashion and to make sure that the maintenance crews were on their jobs, making sure that things were prepped and ready for, for each and every meeting, each and every service that, that went forth. However, I didn't, have, I didn't have to prepare for a Sunday message every week. I didn't have to prepare for a midweek expression or Bible study every week. I, I didn't have to manage a budget nor, nor feel responsible for any employees uh, in their financial wherewithal, wherewithal or anything like that. Uh, 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 and, and, and then to, to move from that ministry to move to, to New Hope Missionary Baptist Church was to give up the freedom of little responsibility. To move was to take on weekly issues that I had not previously had to deal with, but, but I felt that God was moving in my life. I felt that God was moving in the lives of my family, and I knew that I had to release what I was comfortable with, what was comfortable to me, and move on to what God was going to do in my life. But it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. To move involved a major adjustment for me. It meant leaving a church, whereas I was only responsible for my department, for a church where I was responsible for the church. And it hadn't been easy. And, and I knew that it wasn't going to be easy. And, it, and, and, and if I were to be 
very transparent about it. It took some time. It took some time for me to accept these responsibilities. Why? Because as I, as I, as I began to deal with those responsibilities, this particular question constantly popped up in my mind. Maybe it popped up in different words, but the bottom line was, what were you expecting, Pastor Jones? What, what, what were you expecting? Were you expecting for it to still be easy? Were you expecting for it to not be challenging? Were you expecting... To, for, for people to love you regardless of what was going on and to not to never have a bad word to say about you, what were you expecting, man? The transition wasn't, wasn't easy. But Sister Jones and I knew that, that this was our next step. Watch this. Of obedience. Are you with me? So family, as we were preparing to move, this question that I'm asking you tonight, this question came to me. What if, what if more means a next step that we weren't expecting? Uh, what if more means a next step that we weren't expecting. Like the young man in, 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 in our text tonight, we might be disappointed. Or like Peter in Matthew 16, we, we may become frustrated. But once our next step, family, is made clear, we have a choice to make. Now, I don't know what that next step is for you. I don't know what it is that God is putting in your life. I don't know where God is trying to lead you as it relates to your spiritual journey. But I can tell you this. You will never get there by refusing to let go of what's holding you back. God is desiring of you to move God said that I would never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. God has given you and I a promise that whatever he leads us into, he will bring us through it. Luke 9 and 23 says, Then Jesus told them what they could expect for themselves. Watch this now. It says, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Read, let me read that for you again. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You are not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Follow me. And I will show you how. Follow me. And I will show you how. So family, whatever it is that God is is showing you whatever it is that God has put on your heart. Know this today. He expects for you to move. And he also expects for you to let go of whatever it is that's holding you back. I can't answer that for you. But I'm so glad that he can. And let me give you something for free. You know what it is. Thank you, Lord. You know what it is. So I want to encourage you, family. Begin to spend some time in prayer day by day. And I'm, and I'm going to suggest this as I close. Surrender your expectations at the feet of Jesus. Because what you expect and what it is that you desire 
almost always is in complete contradiction to what God expects from you. So I close as I say, as I ask this question. Is there a step that Jesus has revealed to you which you were not expecting? And then what would it take for you to move forward in faith? Ask yourself that question. Ask the Lord to reveal it. Then move. May God bless you. And may God keep you in our prayer. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you again for just being who you are. And thank you, Father, that even during our times of unexpected opportunities and unexpected revelations, that you are still with us. Now, Lord, I pray for the strength of those that are listening to my weak voice. I pray right now, Father, that you would give me the courage to do what it is that you desire for me to, to do. Lord, I pray for peace and comfort as we continue to navigate this thing we call life. And I pray that we do it not alone, but that we do it with you. Now, Father, I pray blessings and I pray peace over those that are in, in bereavement right now. Please, Jesus, you touch as only you can. I pray now for those that don't know you in the pardon of their sin. The Bible so clearly states that if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Let them hear those words ringing in, their, in their, their heart and in their minds and allow them, Lord, fresh strength to move saying, what must I do to be saved? We thank you. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray and we ask it all. Amen. Well, family, thank you again. Thank you for joining us on tonight. I pray that something was said that would help you. I know it helped me. Again, I look forward to seeing you on this Sunday morning, 9 o'clock, Sunday school, 10 o'clock, our, our worship, 3 o'clock, our children's Sunday school, and 4 o'clock, our teen Sunday school. We thank you. We love you. And don't ever forget. There's nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. Have a wonderful evening.